Hello, welcome to the Friday, February 28th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from San Francisco, California. First of all, thanks to everybody who came to our workshop and our keynote panel today. Real great turnout for both sessions. And if you have any questions about either sessions, just email me for the workshop where we talked about some of the mobile web application authentication challenges. There will be a website authonthemove.com that uh, will be make available with all the material that we discussed during the workshop. Right now, you'll already see sort of some of the little demo code fragments and such uh, that we talked about during the workshop. As far as the panel goes, RSA will make available a recording. It may already be available by the time you are listening to this. But let's take a look at what we have in other news. Well, first of all, the surfing attack comes out of Washington University in St. Louis. And essentially what it's all about is that a lot of mobile phone microphones are actually quite sensitive to ultrasonic waves. So what this means is that ultrasonic sound can be used to trigger, for example, digital assistants like Siri or the Google Assistant. Now this basic idea has been demonstrated before. What's a little bit new in this particular paper is that ultrasonic sound can also get carried quite well by solid objects. So it's a little bit easier to inject a command through, for example, a piece of wood like a desk or something like this that can be used to conduct ultrasonic waves. And of course, it's a little bit more difficult to defend against than sort of the traditional attack where just someone in the room speaks a command because it makes it more difficult to actually realize what's happening. And Douglas Leith from the Trinity College in Dublin did a nice, fairly exhaustive study of what kind of information browsers send back to their manufacturers as part of the course of normal browsing. Now, one problem here that's being pointed out throughout pretty much all browsers is that the URL bar and the search feature have sort of merged. So what's happening now is is if you are typing anything in the URL bar, there are also search requests being sent to whatever search engine the website is using, like for example, Google for Google Chrome, of course. Now for most browsers, uh, this information does not include any identifier for the user. Two notable exceptions here that are being pointed out is Microsoft Edge and Yandex. Now uh, they're different because they are fairly aggressive in how they are identifying users and are transmitting, for example, hardware UUIDs with each request they're sending back as part of the search. Now, well, of course, the UID is not necessarily information that identifies a particular user as in their name and such. By linking the UID to all of uh, the very rich content that's coming back here as part of these searches, it shouldn't really be too difficult to de-anonymize the data. And Sophos has a write-up about the interesting attack that they're calling Cloud Snooper. Now, this is actually an attack that apparently they have seen in the wild after inspecting a compromised system. And what the attacker did here essentially was a fairly tricky workaround to reach a system that had quite restrictive firewall rules applied to it. So the problem the attacker had to deal with here was that the server only allowed access on port 80 and 443, but these two ports, well, they had already a web server listening on it. So the attacker wanted to be able to reach a backdoor listening on that particular system. What the attacker did here was uh, first have the backdoor listen on a high port and then set up net filter rules that would rewrite incoming traffic from certain source ports to be redirected 
on the system itself to the port that the backdoor was listening on. So in effect, uh, the attacker did sort of a port redirect uh, on the compromised system for traffic coming from very specific source ports. Pretty interesting system and yes, this of course did first require for the attacker to fully compromise, gain root access on the system behind the firewall. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.